How are you finding balance with your personal life and your demanding career? Do, do you have any advice for maintaining a healthy work-life balance? Yes, I absolutely do. I think it's a... Uh, um... So I'm not that busy in the, in the sense of I, I'm not that I'm not a very busy actor. It's not like I shoot many days in a year. But you know, this career is such that even when you're not shooting, you're kind of working. You have a passive prep that's on. There is always meeting and buy, buying for new projects. There's there is a there's a whole other aspect to it, which is the career navigation, uh, so to say. You know. I'm doing good. How are you doing today? Good. I'm very excited to speak to you. So I know you're very, very busy. So I'll try to be very brief. No, please. I have all the time for you. <laughs> well, See, I you disagree. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm really excited to talk to you about this project, Yada Yada. Um, I've been able to watch this show. I'm all the way here in the U.S. I, I don't think this one has a release in the U.S. just yet, but we're going to focus this on the international markets for now. Yes, please. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your role in Kiara Gyara? And what, what kind of drew you to this type of story and this character? I'm going to answer your second question first. Uh, what drew me was that, uh, you know, this this genre is extremely popular. Police procedural dramas, investigative dramas, they appeal to our human instinct of curiosity. I think they're very interesting, engaging to watch. And when this came my way, I thought, do we need another one? Do we need another uh, police procedural? When I started reading the script, I very soon realized that we needed this one. We needed this spin because this is the show where uh, your investigative tools have a surreal quality to them. There's a fantasy element to it. It is that every time that the clock strikes Gyara Gyara um, or 11-11, there is two walkie-talkies mysteriously connect. One is in 2016, the other is in 1990. And somehow through the intel exchanged on these uh, in this communication helps us solve cases that were buried 15 years ago. And I thought that was very interesting because this is the kind of superpower that you have, but it comes it comes with a cost, just like most superpowers. It's like if you change the past, then something in the present is also going to change. So, you know, I thought that that dichotomy, this element of fantasy, it just really made this a compelling story for me. And as far as my part is concerned, I, I'm fortunate to be in both the timelines, in the past as well as the present. So I got a huge canvas to kind of go uh, wild with in this one. And uh, it was really lovely forming this character from like this young, naive, newly recruited police officer to the confident uh, DSP Vamika Rawat in the present where she's leading a unit. For me, it was like living the prime years of a police officer almost and uh, gave me a lot to do as an actor. A very, very rewarding experience indeed. Well, you've been working as an actor for a while now, and your craft has actually evolved over the years. Nope. Can you tell us? <laughs> it has. It's noticeable. Um, can you tell me a little bit? How did you approach this specific character? Was there anything that attracted you or attracted you to this character or anything that you connected with? Or are you just a fan of the true crime genre? I am a fan of the genre, definitely. But I'm also at a time in my career, in my life as an actor, after doing, after after acting for so many years that I want to take on challenges that demand a lot from me. Like I want it to be immersive. I want it to be all or nothing. I want to, you know, uh, really get into the skin of the character, have to do something physically to change my physicality or to get into the psyche of a character. Like if it's not that immersive, I don't think it's that, as exciting for me. Because if I had to just wake up and go to set and play Kritika, that would become boring real quick, you know. So this one gave me that challenge and uh, I just finished playing a gangster on screen and came my way this opportunity to play an upright cop and I thought why not let's see how this goes and uh, you know to my surprise it wasn't just the profession that was new to explore there were certain shades of the character um, and conflicts of the character that, that explored that gave me an opportunity to get to know myself a little better and uh, I think I've learned a lot from it. That's really powerful. So I'm curious then, you know, with your career going from such high profile projects to another, 
How are you finding balance with your personal life and your demanding career? Do, do you have any advice for maintaining a healthy work-life balance? Yes, I absolutely do. I think it's a... Uh, uh... So I'm not that busy in the, in the sense of I, I'm not that I'm not a very busy actor. It's not like I shoot many days in a year. But you know, this career is such that even when you're not shooting, you're kind of working. You have a passive prep that's on. There is always meeting and buy, vying for new projects. There's there is a there's a whole other aspect to it, which is the career navigation, uh, so to say. You know. Uh, unfortunately, the acting bits are, are are quite little. Like they're not, they're very few days in the year. But the other part takes up uh, takes a lot from you. Uh, it it can sometimes be a lot to deal with uh, mentally. And uh, for that, I think it's important to surround yourself by people who uh, who celebrate you, who love you, who can support you, and who can also like uh, call your bullshit out. And, <laughs> So I I think that it's important to surround yourself with grounded people who ground you, people who believe in you, but at the same time can uh, can you know can call out your bullshit like I said, and uh, and keep trying because this is a this is a career that requires you to be very vulnerable, to be very emotionally available. Um, every rejection feels personal because it's somewhere you're being rejected for the way you look or for the way you speak or you know because. This is the medium. The medium is you. So everything feels very personal, and that's when a healthy uh, life, uh, a healthy work-life balance, a, fam- a group of friends, family, and a therapist, uh, are things that you should definitely, uh, you know, hold close. So now that you touch on that, I'm curious. Who is the unsung hero of your career? Who's the person that's in your corner? helping you to maintain that balance? I think it's my parents um, because they know how bad I want it but they also never make me feel like I would be any less if I didn't get it and uh, that you know the fact that that's never going to change and they're going to believe in me they will love me unconditionally of course because they are my parents they're going to love me we're related they're like we're, we're bound by blood but they believe in me and my dreams uh, no matter what is the biggest uh, light that's beautiful to hear i'm 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 very touched to hear that um but that that means a lot it, it, go, going back to the show a little bit um can you share any maybe behind the scenes stories or interesting events were there any standout moments from the making of Gyada Gyada that you think audiences might like to find out? There were some really challenging days. I don't know how much I can delve into them because we want pe- people to first watch the show. But uh, we shot this show in Uttarakhand, in Dehradun, in Masuri. These are hill stations in in uh, India. And we haven't really seen this geography on, on uh, Indian television or film before. Uh, not much anyway. We've seen a lot of Delhi and UP and we've seen the cities. But we haven't seen these and they are scenic parts of the country. So they bring a certain character to screen that that feels fresh. Uh, Of course, with them came the challenge of shooting in dead winter in December and January in the hills, which was sometimes sub-zero temperatures and we had to get drenched in rain or run or shoot and do like massive action scenes. And that was very challenging. And looking back, they were also quite funny. There were times when we would forget our character names and just say things that were out of script because it was so cold. Uh, but, you know, there were many such moments. And maybe when we chat again after everybody seen the show, I'll be able to point out and tell you what each day was like. <laughs> so that that sounds really intense. I'm, I'm curious, like how... I mean, and the lives of these characters is also really intense. Like, it's, it's almost like nothing good happens to them <laughs> for a long time, except when Gyara Gyara happens and then there's some hope. But they are leading some really heavy lives, which are, yeah, but it all pays off in the end. So let's see. <laughs> well, your, your career has been very, very fascinating to watch. You've worked in television, you've worked in film. You know, I, I can't help but wonder how you choose your projects. But more importantly, I'm wondering, what what advice would you give to someone who's an aspiring actress, someone who's looking to make their mark in the industry, somebody who wants to be 
the next you. What advice would you give to someone who is looking to break into acting, um, but may not come from a traditional acting background? Someone who hasn't started, who's starting out, I would say that grow a thick skin. Um, I would say that don't have a plan B. I know it sounds counterproductive, but you know, honestly, only if you're really crazy about this, get into it because it's uh, the highs and lows are extreme. And there are many times when you can feel like, why am I even doing this? Only if you have a crazy belief in yourself and you feel like this is the only thing you want to do with your life, you get into it. Uh, that's what I'd say. For someone who's already doing it, who's in it, I would say that make a list of, don't make a list of your do's, make a list of your don'ts. Because the no's uh, will actually shape up the kind of actor that you are and the kind of work that you attract. I love that advice. Um, wow. Okay, I'm, that's going to resonate with me for a little bit. Uh, okay, again, I, I know you're very busy. Um, this will be my last question and then I'll let you go. Um, are there any other upcoming projects that you're excited about that you can share with your fans? The one thing that I'm currently shooting for and has already announced is something I can share with you. I'm working on a project called Matka King. It's being directed by Nagraj Manjule, who's won uh, four national awards in India. He's a really celebrated filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And it's it's been... Uh, uh, and it's been an absolutely amazing experience so far. I've taken a break from that shoot to, to you know, uh, for Gyana Gyana right now. And all my hopes and energies are into this show. But as soon as this comes out, I'm going to go back to that shoot. And hopefully that will come out sometime next week. Excellent. Season. I'm excited to see your next work. Well, um, again, thank you so thank much for your time, Kritika. I'm so happy to have had this opportunity to speak with you. I've, I've got goosebumps. Um, <laughs> Oh, I'm looking forward to your next project. I hope to speak with you again. Again, this is for Gata Gata on Z5 Global. It, it doesn't have a U.S. Uh, distribution, or, or I hope it does in the future, but definitely. Yes, look but if you get Z5 Global, it comes out on 9th of August, and I hope everybody tunes in. I can assure you, once you press play, it's going to keep you engaged, and it's going to keep you wondering what's coming next. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. You too. Thank you.